Thank you all for coming back to another time with each other on this crypt chat. Today we're going to talk about coping with COVID. Um, it's been yes, I heard you. It's been oh, quite since a, March. Yeah, since March. It has been right? since March, uh, which is what six months? No, not quite. Not quite. no. Why <laughs> five months? Five months. <laughs> Now that we just said I'm really March, April, March, April, May, June, July. Since yeah. we just ended August, it, it five, wouldn't count. Five months. Right. Wow. Right. That's like crazy. Years. Yeah. So we are. Really? Yeah. So we're going to, um, Tylea, uh, Hi. thought it would be a good idea just to do a check in with us about how we're all coping with COVID because it's kind of like something we, it, like with anything, something happens, it's a big deal, and then it fades into the background. So um, I want to thank Tylea because there might be, you know, it'd be interesting to see where people are five months um, from the beginning, which is what um, when we started Crip Chat. So I feel like COVID marks also the birthday of Crip Chat. So. <laughs> Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we brought something good out of it. <laughs> yeah, COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah, COVID. I know. He's five months old. Oh, yeah. When it passes, when we can joke about it, that's that'll be our joke. Exactly. It's COVID's yeah. anniversary. What? No, it's Crip Chat. <laughs> it's Crip Chat. So yeah. I'm gonna turn it over to Tylea. Um, uh, you, all, all of you know Tylea, but for those of you that don't, who are watching the replay, I just want you to know that Tylea is a powerful disabled millennial with CP who is making waves Ooh. as a creator and influencer in our space. So I'm so excited to have her as part of Crip Chat. She is one of the, uh, people that started from the beginning, a founding member, and she has mm. definitely added to, the, uh, added to the environment and the atmosphere of, of Crip Chat, which is so positive. And like I said, uh, we all participated, not, we, not all of us, but many of us here participated in the ADA celebration that was coordinated by Priya Ray and Revolve and I just was saying earlier how I felt so, like I was in such good company, you know, and that, that like does attract like. And if you guys are all reflections of me, yay me. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me yeah. so. too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Dude, not the me too everyone is upset about. Right. So I'm going to, uh, Jade is joining us now and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Tylea. Thanks, Tylea. You're welcome. So hi, everybody. The first thing I'm going to do is ask you, what have you learned from COVID and has COVID changed your perspective on your disability and the things that you could do or is it still the same? For me, it's still the same. I mean, it changed my perspective of yeah. what I want to be in life as it's an okay. actor. It's on me, so. But in the same aspect, I'm still me. In the same aspect, I got to learn. I got to grow. I got to connect with you guys. And I've done a lot of writing through COVID. So that's my thoughts. Well, I guess I'll go for it. <laughs> I, I feel like. I, my life is sort of the same. I mean, I, I don't really have a job in the sense of a nine to five type thing, but I made money through, I mean, you know, I'm an artist. So it was like more like a freelance thing where I would go sell things. And, you know, with in winter, like in Asheville, like pretty much from the spring till like Christmas is like the time where people sell their art and make money. But COVID kind of, Took, took that out of the ballpark or whatever, however you want to say it. So that's changed for me, like ways for me to make money, which I'm trying to figure out still. But as far as going 
out and like going, you know, what everyone else complains, they can't go to the bar and they can't go here. Uh, you know, it's kind of the same. And what does freak me out is when I go grocery shopping. That's like literally the only social event I do is go grocery shopping. <laughs> but you me know, too. I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm supposed to do. So I do my mask and sometimes at the grocery store you pass someone and I'm like, I'm just going to zip by you really back to my wheelchair. And I'm sorry, I'm not exactly six feet away. But, you know, I, I, I'm i very aware of that. So I, I, that's kind of what stresses me out is like, am I getting too close to people? Am I kind of not respecting what, 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 what I'm supposed to be doing in wheelchair? It's a little as far as that kind of stuff goes. So... But yeah, and, and I think I'm actually busier and I don't hate to say happier, but I am happier because I'm busier. <laughs> so, so I can relate to you on that one. Busy makes me happier. So COVID-19 has actually made me a little happier in that sense. But, and I do hope because like there's all these things going on in society, like working from home and the medical system and all these things that disabled people have been complaining about forever and ever and ever. And I really do hope when we go back to whatever the normal is that we think about these things and, you know, include disabled people in our communities by letting them work from home and, you know, fixing the medical system and Medicaid and all these things, you know, that disabled people need to, to be independent and live their lives. So I hope that does happen after COVID's over, but I don't know. Very, My sinister does know, but I don't know, but I don't want to be- Very good thoughts, Priya. And I like how you touched on how you felt in the supermarket, because I feel the same way. And I think a lot of people here uh, feel the same way. So who would like to go next? Any contestants on uh, the COVID is right? I'll go. I all right, John, take it away, jokester. <laughs> um, well, I'm actually just going to bubble off of what Priya said. Um, as a freelance writer and an author, I have been able to continue my work as also as an accessibility advocate. Even with COVID around, I, at first, it, how can I say this without, sounding like a complete babbling idiot. Um, at first, COVID pissed me off because guess what? When they first did it, it locked down everything for 12 weeks. I wasn't able to go to youth group for 12 weeks. That's 12 Wednesday nights that I was home alone doing nothing. So in that aspect, now that everything's kind of opening back up and getting back to normal, I don't care if I around wearing a mask i'll wear a mask i'll carry a i'll carry a torch you know i don't because i mean it's my life and covid's not going to stop me from being who i am and y'all will even notice it you know covid has not stopped me from making quality videos and content because as a content creator nothing stops me and so that's my thing on that i'd like to add to that i feel like COVID has really, um, especially for us creators, have almost has almost created a cocoon around us. So we have mm -hmm. to, um, so we have time to go within and think about how how and what we want to create, you know. And exactly. I feel like that's that's such a gift. And what you said, John, like the it hasn't changed who you are. I'm like, oh my god, so many people need to hear this. And actually, I feel like it's almost magnified of who we are. Um, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? I, it's almost made space for us in a way, too. And, yeah, you know, I agree. that event was talking about making space for ourselves. And I feel like COVID has made space for us in a way. So even though it's bad, I, of course, don't think it's a great thing. But, but you know, it has for the creators and the creatives. I like to call them Crip creatives. And, uh, and crip creatives for our Crip yeah, creatives. Yeah, Crip creators. It's space for us, so. 
Yeah, I could agree with that too, because as a freelance writer and as an author and as an advocate, it's given me opportunities to connect with people. It's given me inspiration to write, so I'm very happy about that. Next person I would like to go up is our newbie <laughs> from Virginia. I know she's shy. But... I see. Um. <laughs> oh, y'all hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. <laughs> I think she froze, I think. Okay, it's, I think it's opened up new opportunities for me that I didn't think. I really wouldn't have discovered new opportunities if, if I hadn't slowed down. Did we lose you, Imani? I think we lost her. Dang. Okay, there you I think we're starting to get you back. Yeah. Okay. I said I said I think it um, COVID has opened up new opportunities for me. And because um, I before COVID I was always on the go. <laughs> And so, because of COVID, it had to slow down, and it just, I discovered something that I enjoy, which is advocating and writing. Awesome. I'm, Imani, do you have a website or um, a place in which people can interact with your writings? Okay. Uh, now I just have Facebook. I haven't created a website or anything yet. No worries. That 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 that. You know what? Someone said to me that who is a you know they make millions online and they said muse uh, websites are like museums now. So. <laughs> Don't spend too much effort on your website. Um, you get social, on everything. Okay. Social media is where it's at. So yeah, yes. That's how me and her met. Was actually through an organization where I was doing the CP conference, and she messaged. Yeah. Me. She was like, "Our stories are very similar. Can I connect with you?" I was like, "Sure." Uh. And now we're like cool CP besties now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, You're like twinning. <laughs> yeah, we even got twin glasses in the same hair. Right? <laughs> How, okay, sorry. All right, go next. Hi, Cecil. Hey, what's going on? This is a very touchy subject. COVID, I might have done. Um, it did piss me off. <laughs> it just came out of nowhere. Uh, no one was suspecting it. It shut down everything. I'm like, what's going on? Everything was fine. Then um, now it just it puts everything back into perspective. It pretty much exposed a lot of things that were in the dark. You no, know, uh, you know a lot of issues, and um, we have to adapt. Me, uh, mm -hmm. so I mean, when mask is fine, if you wear it, it's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. Uh, it does. I think this whole thing is traumatizing. You know, uh, to go from not wearing a mask to wearing a mask, and you know, it it has a effect on everybody, um, on people's mental health, if you will, because I deal with a little bit. 
I, I do with a little bit of anxiety, so I'm a little bit more panicky. You know, I feel like I can't breathe. But um, too, um, I want to touch on this. It also point out a lot of things that we take for granted. You know, um, when we're not able to go see our friends, family, how we are so busy. Now, yeah. let me keep it. You know, it, it sucks, you know? Because uh, everybody's so free, they're going to catch the cooties. I call it cooties. Oh, she's yeah. hilarious. It's like very, time. very well put. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's like the cooties. Like, yeah, it's like the cooties for sure. And, you know, it's funny how you mentioned the mental health thing. Not that it's funny, but... I could agree with you completely on that because the other day I went to a doctor for a physical and going into the doctor for the first time with the COVID-19 rules and stuff, it just gave me like real bad anxiety and I spoke to my doctor about like what I've been dealing with with anxiety and mental health and she gave me some pretty good advice and she said you need to have white space time for yourself because if not you go crazy and I I do have pre-existing mental health, like, problems. Like, I suffer from anxiety, depression, and ADHD, and adjustment disorder. And COVID's been a lot for for me, so I could relate to what you're saying completely. It's just not the disability aspect, but the, you know, the mental health aspect. Yeah, I am I, that, too, because I, you know, it's I, summer... I have a friend, Liz, like, you know, I have some friends in town that I just like to go hang out with them. And we figured out a way, like one friend has a big yard and we just all kind of hang out far away from each other. Some people are wearing masks, some people aren't. So I do that, but yeah, it's kind of a bummer because it's like, you can't just go hang out with your friends and not think about things, which is a bummer, so. And it makes you more uh, cautious of what to touch and what not to touch. So I I never realized I, that you touch so many things just going out in public because we have disabilities. So yeah, uh, like I uh, for me, I have to use those rails to get on. on right. And and then when I get back from the grocery store, I'm like wiping down my wheelchair too because I'm like, I don't know, maybe I, I don't know, like your assistive, uh, your assistant of uh, assistive equipment is also out in the world and you got to, I don't know, I feel like you have to wipe that down as well as washing your hands, washing your hands and your disability assistive equipment, like walkers right. and, and wheelchairs, so. And plus, to I like to add too, I think this whole COVID nineteen has really created a lot of fear. You know, uh-huh. so uh, every everybody's afraid to move. <laughs> you know, but um, you know, you have to keep living. Mhm. I I agree, Susan. Go ahead. Not, I, and and, and, and um, I think someone else just on this space. Um, right now is the best time to be creative. You know, um, I love a lot of business shut down, and now it's this is the most great time to work on the things that you've been putting off. You know, Definitely. yes, just you, that's true for disabled people. That's just true for everyone because everyone does can't go out. So, you know, I but agree they, with Priya. Yeah, I agree. I, now, now is the time for all of us to be creative, get involved, do more advocacy from your house. That's what's got me motivated. The advocacy part and connecting with you guys every weekend. So, who hasn't gone? Uh, Freddie. 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 And hi, Renee. 
I just wanted to say the only thing that's changed for me is I've been able to meet you guys because I'm pretty much homebound anyway, so nothing's really changed us other than it's connected me with Crip Chat and you guys. I'm so excited about that. Um, I know I was asking Tylea before you all came on, like, does anyone know of any other groups that are able to have conversations or, you know, other organizations being able to do this kind of thing? Because for me, it was a response to COVID. Um, I, in Hawaii, we're, we're almost like in a bubble. So we're not as uh, affected by COVID as other parts in the mainland. So I mean, I mean, I still go out, meet with my friends. So we'll go to the beach. You don't have to wear masks on the beach, you know, or outside. So, um, or we'll go to each other's houses, and and um, so it hasn't affected me that way. But I was, you know, in response to quarantining. I don't know where the idea came from, but it was, thank God, it came and just downloaded into my brain of like, other people are gonna need this. So. That's why Crip Chat was born, but and and Need is the mother of invention. So I'm so excited to be able to that that this group came together too. I had no idea what it what it would look like or how it would like manifest itself, but I'm so glad it did. And then we can help each other as you know in each, in each every in each person's respective locality we can go in and support like we did on on Thursday with Priya's thing and I thought that was so cool I thought that was amazing and I love you Pauline thank you so much for this that you oh. no I, I don't think I would have survived COVID-19 and everything personally that I had to go through losing my great grandma two months before COVID and Dealing with that loss, it really affected me really bad. And this has given me the the thing I needed to help me grieve. So expect an article at the end of the year on how you guys helped me through my grief this year. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I love raising people up. And I love that you're all taking the lead of like guest hosting and all of that. So thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Who else needs should talk? Renee. How Renee. The beautiful Renee. You gotta unmute Renee. Okay, got it. What are we doing? I know what we're talking about generally, but I didn't know where we were. So I didn't want to jump in. <laughs> I, I I we're going through my husband's got surgery next week, so today we drive an hour, so he got his COVID test, you know. And then they wait and they make sure you're clear before they do the surgery next week. So we're quarantined for, I don't know, five, six days now. So after you get the test, you have to be quarantined. So I'm also, I don't know what you're talking about exactly, but I know that, um, I don't know if it's making the national news, but we're living in the highest uh, rate of uh, infections in Oregon, like this county. So, um, yeah, just, just yesterday, the governor put us back to total stay-at-home orders. Um, so, yeah, the New York Times did this thing. with They did a study of 3,000 counties in the United States, and they, they uh, labeled them or listed them by the worst, you know, the best. We're number 75, so out of 3,000, as far as being bad. You know, how many infections per capita or per 10,000 people. I don't know. Wait, wait, we're at 23%, and the rest of Oregon is like less than 5% infection rates. So, Could I um, ask you something? Sure, Denise, go right ahead. Are you um, next to Portland at all? We're about, we're about three and a half hours, I-5 East. So we're, it's considered Eastern Oregon because we're on the other side of the Cascade Mountain Range. Oh, okay. It's really different. It's like a whole different environment. This is like high desert, what they call high desert. Um, it it's, doesn't have a lot of trees. Like you think about Portland with the rain and the trees and the green and everything. But out here, it's like, 
I don't know how to explain it. It was 108 degrees the day before yesterday. That's one the way to explain it. Because there's been a lot of Portland in the news lately. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Portland yeah. the day before protesting and the police, you know, not acting properly. But I haven't really heard it, the COVID really increasing there. So it's interesting to me that in your, I wonder why in your county it's so much higher than in the rest it's, of them. the um, The answers tend to be very political when you ask that. So the Oregon <laughs> Health Authority feels it's more from family gatherings and asymptomatic spread. There is like they've done some tests, like random tests, and it looks like most of the people who have COVID out here have no symptoms. And so a lot of people that don't have symptoms are just kind of going along their way, not wearing masks, just kind of like, I don't, I'm not sick, but they are. And they're spreading it's, it around. They're asymptomatic, you said. Yeah. So yeah, maybe in Portland, people are being more conscientious about wearing the mask and keeping the distance of washing yeah. your hands. Where yeah, you well, like, yeah, we've got a lot of political stuff going on because this is a red, I call, I've i called it, I said I think I explained it before, it's like a very Republican, very conservative area, mm -hmm. and they hate the governor. So if the governor says to wear masks, it's like a knee-jerk reaction. They're not going to wear a mask. Wear a mask. And so that's been a problem. So the governor said, like, she's so... Like in my opinion, she's really wimpy, but she's always trying to do things collaboratively and everybody let's get along. And so she kept trying to work with the Umatilla County commissioners, like to get them to change their ways and they wouldn't. So finally she said she had to just do it. She had to just like shut everything down because people were dying. People are like, and it affects Portland because we don't have a big hospital here, you know, it's not like Portland. So when people get, when a lot of people get sick, they get life flighted over to Portland and then their hospitals fill up. Right. So, you know, that side is affected by what we do over here. Right. So maybe that's what got them. I don't know. But they finally did it. So I'm happy because I was watching the numbers every day. This is a county of 77,000 people every day, 50 to 60 new cases every day. Wow. I think that's a lot. Yeah, I think that's a lot. That's a lot. And we're having the same issue here in Florida is that the cases keep going up and a lot of the, a lot of the people don't want to wear masks because they don't have symptoms or they think they don't have it, but they're getting people sick. And my thing is this, we're, just wear the mask. What's the big deal? You're doing right. it. What's the big deal? I know. If you, if you don't have a physical reason not to wear it, then what's the big deal? It's just a piece of cloth over your face. Because they're, when, I, when I go online to listen to what people are saying, they have this phrase, I'm going to live free. I want to live free. No government is going to tell me to put a mask on. It's like, I don't know how that became synonymous with freedom. I don't know. I people, people have like talked about wearing a mask as a civil rights issue. And I actually, you know, yeah. Masks last week and they he, the guy wanted to interview me about how COVID-19 affects people with disability and I told him you know I don't understand why people don't want to wear a mask they're acting as if this is a civil rights issue that they're being at you know forced to wear a mask and I was like it's not a civil rights issue it's a public health issue right so I mean you wouldn't yeah. like go a hundred miles an hour through a school zone right you know that yeah, that's no, wrong you wouldn't do that yeah, so exactly. why is this different? Exactly. And you know what? The people that are not wearing masks is are making it an issue for us to have things reopen. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and the other thing is some people with disabilities like Colleen and other people that have respiratory issues. I know Don was telling me he had where it's hard to breathe with the mask. So really people need to wear the mask for people that can't wear the mask. It's, that's it's true. true. And so that's another, yeah. Another They're making it hard for people that right. have disabilities because 
So I, yeah, they're making it hard for all yeah, at risk people. I, I, I yeah. put a video on the Quip Chat, um, the Quip Chat Messenger thing, where some people are um, screaming, and then they're suing the stores for making them wear masks and screaming about um, medical, like they have a medical condition and I, I'm i like, you don't, you know, put, you're just yeah. screaming that because you want to sue the store and then the only yeah. people that get hurt are the shoppers who like the store owners have to raise their prices because some idiot threw a fit and didn't want to wear a mask and they're, now they're suing the store. That's a great, that's a great topic, Denise, and thank you for bringing that up because, and here's the downside of it, reopening resource programs for people with disabilities that don't really understand what's going on that have mental disabilities. I know my grandma, she's a special ed teacher. She's been a special ed teacher for many years and she's scared to go back to her school because she's like, how are we going to teach uh, social distance learning with kids that have high functioning autism, kids that have cerebral palsy that aren't really aware of what's going on and they like to take off their masks. Kids with Down syndrome that don't really understand that like don't like to take things off or don't like to wear things and they don't understand exactly. what it's like not to put their hands to themselves how are they gonna how are we gonna be able to do that and she's like i have no choice but to leave my job at this point so yeah and the other issue too is businesses suing businesses businesses have to do that they have to look out for the safety of all their customers yeah they're, they're yeah. putting you know, it it's just not, do a, yeah. Do a, do a business because they're making you wear masks. They're just following the rules that the government. Yeah, is the governor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's mm -hmm. ridiculous to sue. And then there's like a group of people that are made fake ADA cards, like. Oh, and they're yeah. heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Oh, that's terrible. They've done. Terrible. They've done that. Oh, that's and and I, I've actually reported some that were being sold on Amazon. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I didn't know that was that was yeah, they, were, they were selling fake um, exempt mask cards and fake handicap stickers, guys. Oh, my God. They, oh my were, God. That's so wrong. they were selling those, and I had to, t like, people's... People were sending it to me, and I was like, I urge you to call Amazon and report this. And me and a group of my other friends in another advocacy group did that, and within hours, they were gone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Wow. And, uh, people on Amazon, the guy that I spoke to, he said he had a brother with a polo, and he didn't even know that people <laughs> did this kind of thing. I said, yep. Yeah. That's like taking big That's time crazy. advantage. You know, maybe we should like, write a letter and like get it get it out to our newspapers. You know, from uh, people with disabilities and like, you know, you're putting us at risk and you're making life difficult. And I don't know, maybe I I, don't, I guess it's letters like that I've now. I've done that. I've done that with my governor, Governor DeSantos, and Senator Mark yes. Rubio and Senator Rick Scott. You want to know something? None of them replied to me. Uh -uh. I mean, for the newspapers. Idea, you should write a piece for your local newspaper. Newspaper, yeah. Oh, yep. oh I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. I actually have a draft in plan. So, I'm going to do that, too. I just decided I'm doing that for the Asheville newspaper. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Let's do it. Everyone here should write something for their local newspaper and say, this. I'm disabled, and this is why I worry about not wearing a mask. Right, yeah. I'm gonna do yeah. a video. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Look, it's born. Another thing is born. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I actually started wearing. Um, I don't know. There were only a few of us on the call with uh, Gina when she was creating those like headbands from the in the front, mm -hmm. and that has mm -hmm. the shield. 
So mm-hmm. she sent one to me. So I started wearing that. Um, and I know Cecil, you, uh, you, you don't like wearing a mask either. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a mask. Well, it really, it dampens my functionality, literally. So, um, I really am anti-mask, but the face shield, I feel like I can control it a little bit more, but it keeps falling off. I feel like Wonder Woman, like the headband in the front. And oh it's, my God. Yeah. It's like we should make this a thing like Wonder Woman. And then. But I was thinking, because it, it started, um, it's starting to like stretch out and get and fall. So I'm always having to adjust it. But I had an idea, um, like you're wearing a baseball hat, Cecil. You could like actually create, put a face shield on that hat and it'll actually be away from your face and protect everybody. Um, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. That's- Oh my god, another idea for you. Yes. Take some alligator clips, clip it to the sides of the hat. You got your face shield right there. Yeah, yeah, you could like clip it. Yeah, or it could like hang from the top of your hat. I'm I'm not into that because I don't want any like okay, I this is a total vain thing, but I I like my hair. I don't like thing anything over it. But um, you know, for <laughs> for me, I wanted to be like, "Oh, what about a visor where they don't have anything on the top of the head?" Because and I want to cut a little bit because I'm short. I can't wear baseball caps because then I can't see everybody. I'm just like, I can't, like it blocks my video from everything. So, um, but yeah, like even visors or with like a, you cut it where it's a short bill and it, it hangs mm-hmm. that way. But yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. That is so great. So yeah. smart. Now I just need yeah, to. Yeah, there's a new thing apparently called mask art. So people are like sewing different things and different messages or different pictures. My husband has one. He's in. He had an old Volkswagen bug, like van in the '60s. Like he was an old hippie. So he has a mask that's like a, a Volkswagen. The top, the the part of you know, the front of a Volkswagen. <laughs> like, he looks like, like a, a car. bus, a, a beetle, or a bus. A bus. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah that's. I my, I'm into Volkswagen buses, and you know I'm older, so I'm also had a lot <laughs> of Volkswagen buses and Beetles myself. I know it's great. I'm glad I'm not in Florida. I didn't realize you guys were in Florida. Mm-hmm. I mean that's the thing, Oregon. They're saying we don't want to end up like Florida. Yeah, they're living yeah. on the sun. <laughs> Asheville is slightly a bubble. The numbers have gone up here, but I think the last report it was in Buckham County, which is what Asheville is a part of. I think there was like a thousand, a thousand, like twelve, maybe twelve hundred cases in the entire county, which isn't a lot, but it it was more than when it started because when it started we only had like a hundred and fifty, so mm-hmm. it definitely gone yeah. up growing more and more and more and what I want people to understand about not wearing masks and being disabled in COVID being disabled in COVID for me has been one of the most scariest things I've had to go through in my whole life and in the past 25 years I've never gone through something this scary as to where I'm constantly having anxiety and panic attacks, and I'm very anxious. Were, were you alive in 9-11, um, Talia? Yeah, but I was little. Like, yeah. I, was, yeah. I was little. So uh, I, I, was, was going I, on. I was six years old. Did, did it I don't think you? It did, because my aunt was supposed to be in the building. But like I said, I was small. I was six, seven years old. I didn't... Un- understand the significance well, also that was contained in the new york area i mean it right. wasn't like nine eleven over the is world it, yeah it's an animal nine eleven was a terrorist attack and it destroyed these buildings in new york yeah but COVID and people kind of were, people feels were like... freaking out that other terrorist attacks were going to happen but covid 19 okay. is a it's not like a person attacking another person. It's a disease that's going around, and you have to protect from it. It's a different thing, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't stand it. Maybe people with dis- other people with disabilities don't like it either. Is that every time I read the newspaper and somebody has died from COVID, they go, "But he had underlying medical conditions." Oh, she oh, had underlying. Yeah. Like, 
I hate that too. Like, don't mm-hmm. try to blame the disability for the reason why the person died. Like, blame yeah, like the- it's kind of like, oh, you. It won't happen to you. Those people are just sick anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed but, that too. but then, but then they they have a false negative, like they um they. Oh put God, that there's that too. <laughs> they oh, put yeah. that, no, they put that in the statistics, and then people were like, "Oh, that's how she died because of COVID." Well, no, it's because she died because she had she had that too, you know. So, so it's falsely, um, it's kind of well, like a stat, you know? Underlying, underlying conditions or pre-whatever conditions are, can't really are, are related to disability because if you have a disability, right. like Sarah, have have condition. be like, that's a pre-existing condition. Tylea had a pre-existing condition. Or yeah, opera. I know. I know, but it. They shouldn't say that. They shouldn't yeah. have it as a stat because it's not really. Yeah, because you know, it's not. Like, it's not uh, truthful exactly. And I yeah. An astro, like they check up on me because you know yeah. I'm disabled, and they're like, oh, "Are you okay?" But I'm actually really ex- extremely healthy. Like and the, uh, doctor, my blood pressure is normal. My blood sugar is normal. I exercise every day. I don't really have breathing issues. So I'm actually healthier than most non-disabled people in our community. So like when people come with me, I'm like, I'm really healthy. I just wear a mask because I don't want to get it. I just don't want to get it. And I don't want other people to get it in case I have it. So that, you know, I... I tell my friends, it's like, I suffer literally every day due to my chronic pain from my spinal cord injury and getting something like a COVID-19. I don't think it will really kill me, but it will make me sick and my body. Totally. And then Robert, who is my caregiver who has to work, he's not going to be, you know, he'll have to probably make me food and stuff like that. And, you know, I, which he doesn't really have to do. I do on my own, but if I get it, then that will really mess up the dynamic we have going on here. Yeah. Where, uh, you and know, then you know, with us, ha- and then, and then with us having disabilities, our uh, our immune system is can is very different from um uh, um. Uh, an everybody uh, person, so exactly. yeah, exactly. no, I mean, I think my immune system is actually pretty good. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm actually kind of more healthier because I have a spinal cord injury, and it didn't affect parts of my body. Like I can't walk and exer- you know, do exercise like non I keep myself in pretty good health. I'm very. I feel like I'm very healthy in comparison to most of my community. So I don't think they should put that in the polls, like, of... Yeah, I agree with you totally. Or they should name it, you know, underlying heart condition, underlying whatever it is, so we know what... They should have, like, people with underlying conditions, people without underlying conditions, and then have those be the separate categories, I think. Because right. if we you make them up, we think there's a poll group somewhere that is. We know there's like pollsters out there ready to do stuff like that. So. Yeah, it's crazy. These are, the that, these are the people that did it. Yeah, and you know what the bad thing is is that they make it seem like disabilities can people people with disabilities are more prone to get COVID and. If they get diagnosed with COVID, it's like, oh, we already knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Well, that's part of the triage protocol. Mm -hmm. Like what a lot of people with disabilities are talking is like, if someone is like 23 years old and they're autistic or have Down syndrome, is their life less valuable than someone that's in their 60s that... That's right. In 60s that 
um, doesn't have those conditions, just like they're just like a regular non-disabled person, they got it. So whose life are you going to value more? The younger person with Down syndrome or autism or the 60-something-year-old that is non-disabled? And so it's putting the medical industry in this position where they're going to have to decide whose life they value more and they have to make those decisions. And well, decide- I heard that there, some of the hospitals in Texas are actually having like ethical me- you know, meetings about ethics, about what to do when they have limited resources. Do they just then tell people like me or other people that are older who have cut underlying conditions just at home, we need that ventilator for a young, healthy person. Right. That's, that's scary. I've seen and that that's, happen in the news. That's something Alice Wong talks about a lot because she uses a ventilator and people that are using ventilators <laughs> yeah. for disability are really frightened that the government's going to be like, we paid for this, so we're taking it back from you because we need to give it to this person whose life is more valuable than your life. Wow. So that, so that's yeah. like a real fear for some people. No, you know? And I think they started that we started this hashtag advocates called I am not disposable. Yeah, that's uh, there you go. Hashtag I'm not disposable. For those of you that are watching this recording, I encourage everybody to write that when they're writing to their local newspapers about how we feel as people with disabilities. Hashtag we are not disposable. Yeah, well, I agree. I like it. I tell you, but look, but isn't it something that COVID hit the same time as around the same time as this year at the election? Yes, that is very, that is very, like, convenient for the, I'm sorry for those of you that are Republican in this chat. I hope, I hope I don't offend you, but that's very convenient for the president, and he's thinking about like prolonging elections and here's the problem with that people with disabilities we have a hard time going out and voting and anyway so imagine if you do the mail-in ballots i've already signed up for my mail-in ballot. i told robert we're signing up for mail-in ballots because we're not going to go vote in the middle of covid 19 we're mailing ours in and robert's going to be a crap it. show that's what i think <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but I did read an article about Trump saying he wanted to delay Republicans and Democrats are like, no, because they're just like, no, that's the day we have the election. You just have to do it when it's supposed to happen. So I don't think that's and I that's just something he threw out there without thinking about it. Or something. Yeah, I'm sorry, Priya, I kept cutting you off. I'm so sorry. I just got so excited. But oh no, I get excited too. I do the same thing, Tylia. That's why we love each other so much. Uh-huh. But like, if you like, when it comes to voting in COVID, I think we need to bring awareness to that too for people with disabilities and for people that have a for for people that have a medical condition to say, you know what, we're we we need to do something about voting in COVID nineteen and say we're still gonna let our voices be heard here. Bye, John. Yeah. Have fun fishing. Okay. Bye, guys. Have fun Bye. fishing. Thanks, Bye, guys. I wanna. I wanna yeah. like fish post later. <laughs> I really wanna. Hey, like John, wanna say something? Yeah. Yeah. John. Yeah. Oh, oh, John left. He left. Oh. He has to go fishing. Yeah. It's a catch that fish. <laughs> yeah, before the hurricane hits us, you guys. Oh wow! Like, what what's it called again? What? Oh, uh, I I, the, I don't know the name of the hurricane, but I know we're getting hit by it by Monday. They said by Monday. Wow! Yeah, yeah I heard about that. Yeah, so, I'll well, keep you guys in my prayers. Thank you, Denise. That's so we're in the middle yeah. of. Yeah. We have to deal with the hurricane, and the state of Florida has the most highest cases, and it, it's affecting my friends that are in group homes, too, because where are they going to evacuate to? Maybe the hurricane will take COVID from Florida. Yeah. And, but here's the issue. 
here's the issue, like all my friends in group homes are having, they usually go to shelters and hospitals, but with the hospitals being full and the shelters not being able to fill up like they used to, there's the issue. What about basements? Yeah, because of the social distancing. What about basements? We don't have basements here in Florida. There's no basements. No. No. The sea well, level. Hurricanes. Well Terrible. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about my friends that are on ventilators and that need extra assistance that have to go to hospitals because they have no choice. And the COVID rate is actually higher in group homes and you know, adult assisted living facilities. And that in, you know, I get this update every day, every week from Boca County and most of the cases are at, you know, assisted living facilities and they're really trying to crack down on yeah, that. Yeah, and here's, a, here's another issue that, that, thank you Priya, that you brought us up. A lot of the, a lot of the news stories about people with disabilities being affected by COVID-19 is being ignored and overshadowed by the news media. Like, it's spoken about, but it's not spoken about as much. And that's yeah. something that we need to bring awareness to as people with disabilities. Like, just let's not think about us during COVID. Let's think about the people that are in group homes that don't necessarily get the best care inside the government funding group homes. You know, and it's just sad. Yeah, and I also read in group homes... If there's not a breakout of COVID-19, they're still not allowed to leave their house and like just go down the street for a walk. Like they're yeah. telling you can't leave because yeah, no. you're in a group home and you're a risk because you have a you're a group home, you have a disability, you're at risk for spreading COVID-19 if you could leave they're, your group. They're also um, probably afraid that they're gonna pick it up from outside and then bring it back. Like my friend said, I would have loved, I would have loved to hang out with you for your birthday, but every time she leaves the house, she has to go get tested for COVID. And she said the first time she went, it was terrible, and she wouldn't want to put herself through that again. So she's like, I'll just wish you a happy birthday from the house. Yeah, they stick a thing up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I went to the doctor the other day, they asked me, like, they asked you a whole bunch of questions as soon as you walk into the doctor's office. I got my physical done, and they, now, they're now they're actually taking the COVID from the blood, I think, because I got a ton more blood work than I did before. Yeah, and another thing um, that affected us is um, hospital visits. Like, oh, yeah. Um, you Before the hospital visit, I could bring my parents into the um to the doctor with me, and now I can't. <laughs> no, now you can't. Like that's right. like that's like another friend of mine, uh, who's a not more like a grandfather to me. He's a he's a he's like a grandfather to me. He was my neighbor ever since I was like ten years old, and they called us on Saturday and was like, Mister Walter got diagnosed with COVID and pneumonia, so I ask you guys to keep Mr. Walter, aka Grandpa Walter, in your prayers, and, and his wife said it was really scary because she can't go in with them. So, all these things, just life-changing. Well, yeah, and I've seen interviews with nurses and, like, the healthcare people, and they're, they're, they feel really awful because they said usually under certain times the family's there when someone's sick and and sometimes they're put in the position of they have to be the person that connects them with because the, their family can't come in and be there for them and so and some of them these are their like husbands and wives not just like uncles <laughs> and stuff that you know and they have to like they like really are working hard to like call them and say oh he's doing fine this is what his stats are so it's like actually putting more um responsibility on the healthcare workers because they exactly. feel they can connect these people to their families so they're not alone in this situation do you guys feel like with COVID-19 that your guys are like way more stressed and you're way more 
like worried about what the future holds and the uncertainty of what healthcare is going to be like for your disability in the future? No, not really. <laughs> I don't know. I'm stressed. I'm, I'm more stressed about how this is because there is a lot of activism for disability going on right now during COVID-19 because it is affecting a lot of people with disabilities. And, you know, dis disabled people are pointing out, like, as far as work and medical care and the environment, all these things that have been affected by quarantine times. Um, I'm just more worried about whether people will finally realize that disabled people are just people and they just need, you know, they need a little extra help to be able to be part of society. And I'm hoping that will translate after we get back to normal. I don't know if it'll affect our health care and what we get. I'm not sure. And I, 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 I think that depends on who gets into offices locally, statewide, and, you know, the federal. Well, yeah, the, I mean, I'm in rural America, so it's really different, but there's no way I can see a neurologist. I mean, neurologist is the person that takes care of MS forever. I mean, I'm not going to travel three and a half hours to Portland, stay in a hotel, um, you know, and put myself at risk like that to go see the neurologist. And yeah. so there's no can neurologist. They travel? Excuse me? Can they travel? Or no. they come to you? I don't yeah. know. Right. Oh, oh tree <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a nice dream. <laughs> It's oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm asking you. <laughs> no, I know. No, and I don't even think they do telemedicine. So, I mean, there are some things you can ask on email, um, but for, you know, I mean, I don't know when, like, you're talking about the future. I don't know when this is going to end. Yeah, I don't know yeah. when my next neurology visit. I have no idea. Yeah, that's the, that's the hard. I can relate to you on that, Renee, because I have a mild form of epilepsy, and getting a, an appointment to the neurologist is going to be harder now. That's crazy. It's like just a regular general checkup of where you are and things like that? No, because I still haven't found a neurologist for a few years. They keep on um, giving me the runaround with my insurance, and I've been trying to find one since uh, I, I had my seizure on an airplane last year, Christmas. Ooh, that was fun. Anyway, and um, they still haven't referred me to a neurologist because my insurance isn't... It, let me just say this, it's crap, so I've been trying trying to find one forever and it scares me what's going to happen with the future because of COVID. Doctors are going to be more strict now. Well, yeah, I think well, like, depending on what um, phase you're in, like the hospitals stopped doing what they call elective surgery and they stopped doing elective things. So like you have to have something that's like immediate to even get it in. Like and my dent, I couldn't even get it in unless it like, like my tooth was falling out, you know? Yeah, um, I hear you on that one. I'm sorry, guys. I had to take the mask off. It was it was killing me, but... Yeah, I couldn't <laughs> believe you had it on for that long. <laughs> That's the longest I've had it on. But yeah, uh, I, think, I think for all of us, it's hard. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to host oh, this. I didn't go. Any, anything you want to say before we close out? Um, it no, was no. nice meeting everybody. Oh, Imani, it was so great having you. Sorry you kept getting kicked off. I, don't know what's <laughs> I, made it, I made friends with you on Facebook. Just to let you know. You'll, you'll love her, Priya. You'll love her. You'll love me. You'll love her. I know. Tell okay. And we're, very, we're very similar. Where we're like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Imani, if you that's feel exactly how it was with Tuli and I. Well, huh? Well, I said that's I how it was with me and uh, Tuli. Oh. Yeah, me and Hermani are like sisters. So. Yep. Oh, sorry, Tuli. I didn't see you wanted a picture with everyone. I did. If it's okay with everyone, I'm not sure if it'll be okay. But yeah. I'm I yeah. just wanted to. Can't see Freddie's beautiful face, but that's. 
Your name's there. Oh, oh, is he coming back? Video. I think Pauline, if you I, could take it, it'll be great. Press the wrong button. Sorry, um, guys. I'm back. Well, You're actually, right. if I take it, then I have to use my stick. So. Oh, okay. I, I just took a screenshot. As I did, so. Yeah. Just tell me when. <laughs> yeah, let me put my mask on for the heck of it. Okay, I'll take a screenshot with your mask. Okay, on. thank you, Priya. Because yeah, no. I'll post it to the group. Tell us when Are you're you ready. Are you ready? Just tell yeah. me, Denise, Kylie. Um, everybody, tell me when you're ready, because I don't want anyone. To <laughs> okay. okay. I have a question that's like totally not about anything. Right. I noticed that last week you had this thing that kept. Cro I kept seeing its tail, and I couldn't figure out it was a dog or a cat or what was you that mean? thing all over you yeah that was a dog, dog. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a yeah she's like a little cat all right i'm going to take a picture on the count of three so i want everyone to look pretty or whatever they think they need to look i don't even know what i'm gonna <laughs> i mean I, I gotta be like <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I took that picture. No, that, guys, that's his <laughs> right there. That that is awesome, guys. Thank you so much for and all. I love it's all women here except for Freddie, whose face I can't see. But yeah, where is else? Freddie? Freddie disappeared. <laughs> yeah, Freddie. <laughs> <laughs>